And welcome to Around the Ozark Spotlight. Each week, we uncover the stories behind the people who live and work in southwest Missouri. Those individuals with entrepreneurial spirit who work to better the lives of others or put pen to paper to write books about the stories and history of the Ozarks and its people. I am your host, Scott Meyer, and today we're exploring the world of survivors of domestic violence with Jared Alexander, the executive director of Springfield's Harmony House. You know, Jared, I had to go in and get it exactly from the website. Uh, I'm not sure sometimes people realize that, in fact, we're dealing with survivors of domestic violence. Yeah, that that's right. You know, and uh, a lot of times, you know, we read the news stories, the the horrific things that are going on, and, and the word victim uh, is in there. And, and, and that's not... Uh, necessarily untrue but you know once somebody has escaped that situation and they're moving on they they are, they are a survivor we refer to them as survivors they're our clients they're our residents but um they're they're moving on into a better phase of life and um even some have shared with me that they're they're not uh, surviving they're thriving now and that's what we want to mm-hmm. get them to and that's uh what the the team here at harmony house and, and our amazing volunteers and, and donors help us do every day you know, Jared, we hadn't talked really since early in the pandemic. Uh, why don't you walk us through what kinds of things are working now at Harmony House since the pandemic, maybe some things you've learned and uh, some opportunities uh, for, I guess, men and women uh, who are survivors of domestic violence? Absolutely. Well, I think like most, um, all organizations, nonprofit, for-profit, big, small, whatever, we, we all learned a lot about ourselves um, in the pandemic and, and even in the, you know, the year or so post uh, COVID. Um, we've made some changes to uh, for the better. Um, one of which was we did away with, um, you know, a stay limit um, mm-hmm. that, you know, people are welcome to stay at Harmony House when they come to us uh, as, as long as they need to now, which is a big change. Um, Excellent. And, and that allows uh, a couple of things to happen. One, um, it, it kind of loosens up the stress on that individual or that family that, you know, in a certain amount of time now I have to figure out where am I going? Do I have a job? Are my kids in school? Are they in daycare? All these things um, in, in a set limit of time. Um, that was never really a hard and fast thing, but we, you know, we wanted to make sure that people were achieving goals in, in a, in a time frame. but um, that's been lifted. And so they can, they can take time to do those things right and do the, make the right decisions and the best decisions mm-hmm. for their family and themselves. And our case managers and our advocates here in the, in the building um, get to have that time to work with them and walk that journey with them um, and, and navigate all the ins and outs and the possibilities of those decisions that are big life decisions now. Um, so that stress has been lifted off of them. Um, you know, we also made a change that um, we, we reduced capacity during COVID, obviously, for um, not wanting to put, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of people on top of each other with social distancing and the spread of um, the illnesses. Um, but we had, we also found that that was really working well to have just one single adult or one family in a room versus, you know, uh, you know, up to four people in a room um, also allowed for a lot of really uh, meaningful progress um, and people to feel relaxed and that they can take their time to, um, you know, kind of recover uh, first and foremost from the traumatic situation they've come from um, and then figure out the next right step for them. Um, with the help of our team. So I'd say those were the two biggest things uh, that came out of that. Um, mm-hmm. The other was how are we going to serve more people that um, this issue is affecting in our community? And that's where we've been able to look outside our shelter walls and really focus mm-hmm. on our outreach expansion and and where can we meet the community where they are right now um, and get that word out there about what we do and how we can help. So how are we doing on the ability to house uh, uh, families or individuals, uh, for that matter? Are we full? Are we nearing capacity? Are we, we over capacity? Yeah, we, we unfortunately, we continue to be full um, at capacity here in, in the rooms. We have 41 rooms available here at Harmony House, and they are consistently mm-hmm. full. Um, I'm, I'm told that the last time, you know, the longest period of time we've had between was about 48 hours. Um, and that was just to make sure that we could get, you know, one turned over and cleaned up and ready for somebody. But, um, you know, Scott, the last two weeks um, have been our busiest weeks in the hotline uh, department for the entire year so far. Over 100 calls each week um, that our advocates have answered, um, talking to people about 
um, you know, what's going on, that they may be in an unsafe situation, uh, and in many times admitting and, and approving for shelter here at Harmony House. So um, it's it's been a busy couple of weeks. It's been a busy year. Um, we are on track to answer um, just as many or more phone calls uh, than we did last year, and, and that number was over 3,200. Um, so the need is still great. I think that's the biggest message that we continue to try to push out there, that People are still going through this and people still need help. They still need someone to talk to. Um, and, and we encourage people to call. Um, even if you don't need shelter, please, please give us a call. Someone is always here to, to talk to you. You're hearing our guest today and we're on the Ozark Spotlight. Uh, his name is uh, Jared Alexander, Jared, the executive director. Uh, we had talked a bit about what executive director meant and it's uh, realistically really chief cook and bottle washer. You got to help raise money. You got to yeah. staff the the, the phone folks and uh, and actually probably follow the, the individuals that come into the uh, Harmony House for help. Uh, you know, so it's full, but I know you've said before, full doesn't mean we turn anybody away. Uh, away. That, that's true. Yeah. So say we are at capacity, we don't have a room available. You know, our advocates don't just say, well, I'm sorry, let's try again next time and hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. We are so, you know, connected to our partner agencies and great nonprofits, partners that are doing great work in the community, as well as other shelters in, in the region, in the state, um, that we are going to exhaust every effort to find the right help for that individual before we get off that phone call. Um, and, and even in many cases, if that's just doing some safety planning with that individual um, that isn't ready to make the jump and leave at that moment, but they're considering it, it's, it's, it's a, a decision they're weighing uh, on their own. We want to help them do that in a safe way as possible, um, obviously for them and their, their family. So um, yeah, it, we may be full in that capacity, but we never um, use that as a, I'm, I'm sorry, and that's it. We, we want to do everything that we possibly can to get them in a safe place, make them feel like they're in a safe um, place in their journey there, that, that we can connect them to uh, meaningful resources that are going to help them in that moment. You know, so many uh, services that assist uh, sometimes never have a uh, an, an end ending, a final ending. So you can actually see there's progress being made. You said in the, in the past few weeks you've had more calls than you've had in some time. Uh, that would suggest that progress maybe isn't being made or maybe progress for those receiving help is being made, but that there's still a lot more event, uh, domestic violence out there. Is that fair? There, I'd say that's fair. There's a lot going on. Um, obviously, you think about, um, you know, we, we talked before we came on that, you know, my kids are going back to school. A lot of families are prepping for that, but that's a stressful time. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the summertime can be, you know, it's it's hot and it's it's there's a lot going on. So I think there's some things that just kind of go ebb and flow throughout the year um, that exacerbate normal, you know, existing stressors on a, on a home sure. life. If, if those issues are already existing and then you add on the stress of, of work or personal issues, um, that, that can certainly trigger some, some things, uh, to happen, some conversations to go on. And unfortunately, um, even a little bit further than that. And that may be where we see some of those spikes, uh, throughout different times of the year, mm -hmm. the holiday season, um, we will see, you know, sometimes an increase there, um, you know, the ending of school, back to school and, you know, life changes, um, that happen in, in the home, we, we will see increases in calls. Um, but, but to your point, there is still a great need. And I think what we are, uh, continue to do is try to just educate people more about mm -hmm. what that, um, need is, what domestic abuse looks like in its many forms that it can take. Um, but also how people can get help by calling on Harmony House or our, our partner agencies, um, which I also believe uh, contributes to that that high rise in in call volume is because you know it's not a it's not a crazy taboo thing to talk about in Springfield anymore domestic abuse um, it's it's something that's normal conversation in the workplace now and um, it's okay to bring this up to your supervisor your your leaders at work your friends and colleagues that something's going on. And when we can provide information to um, those people and, you know, in a way, multiply ourselves in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, as many places as we can in the community. Um, yeah, more people are reaching out, more people are saying, OK, I, I know where to turn now where maybe I didn't before. Who are some of the groups uh, locally that you partner with, some of the other nonprofits? Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're a member uh, and a partner agency at the Family Justice Center, um, which includes um, us and the Victim Center, uh, the Green County Prosecutor's Office, um, Children's Services, Legal Services, uh, the Police Department and their DV unit and, and many more. Um, those are our, our closest partners. We're all fighting for mm -hmm. the same 
uh, cause there. And, and so uh, we regularly are in communication with all of those, those folks about, um, you know, how can we get the right services to people? How can we, you know, enhance things that um, we can do better here? And what are things maybe that we're not the experts in, but we have that right person uh, across town at the Family Justice Center to bounce ideas off of, and again, find the best help for, for the clients that we're serving. Again, Jared Alexander, my uh, guest today on Around the Ozark Spotlight. Jared is the executive director uh, for the Springfield Harmony House. Where did the name Harmony House come from, Jared? Let me put you on the spot. You know? Oh, yeah. No, that's a good one. So uh, our, our official legal name, the Family Violence Center, um, okay. you know, we did a rebrand. I want to say it was about 2012, 2013, somewhere mm-hmm. in there. Um, Harmony House, you know, obviously that that gives it a good feeling about, you know, coming here um, and, you know, a, a place of harmony and, and feeling like home. And when you do come here, we want that feeling to, to be there for sure. And it does feel like that. It's a welcoming environment. Um, I'm told Harmony was actually a dog um that was okay. uh, a friend of uh the original harmony house and uh mm-hmm. was a you know kind of a therapy dog of sorts too that that was there but harmony was the name of the dog and it was a really awesome way to obviously transition that into our our rebranding and the new name and everything and so it's was, it was a really cool story to add on to that as well yeah. well good thanks for sharing that yeah uh we always talk about uh, needs, and and uh, the obvious one is always money. And uh, you're no different than anyone else that's doing good for the community. Any other needs that Harmony House is looking for these days? Yeah, you know we're always in need of um, shelter supplies and and food donations. Our kitchen runs mm-hmm. on uh, mainly uh, donated items. You know we do have a, a, a budget. Um, it's a, a fairly limited food budget of. Uh, dollars that we spend uh, in the kitchen. Um, and you know, much like every household in America right now, we're, we're feeling it, you know, at, at the at the supermarket when we have to go uh, and purchase things. So, you know, any contributions of, uh, of food, of um, especially, you know, meat and proteins, um, if you're, uh, you know, got extra produce that maybe you, you grow a garden and you had, you know, a ton of uh, lettuce this, this last harvest and uh, more than you're going to be able to take on you know, consider Harmony House. Um, we do a, a fabulous job. Our kitchen team is is some of the most creative and, um, uh, you know, good at stretching those dollars and stretching those items in our kitchen and making amazing meals for our, our families that are here. So, you know, think think about that next time um, mm-hmm. you're at the grocery store, if you can uh, afford to help us out a little bit there. Um, you know, shelter needs is cleaning supplies, paper goods, all the things that maybe you use in your home on a daily basis. We'll multiply it by 41 rooms. And that's uh, that's what our operation looks like. So um, when you're cleaning out closets, maybe as you're going back to school here and then, or in doing some fall cleaning, um, consider donating those gently used clothing items uh, mm-hmm. to Harmony House. We can pass those along to our residents that uh, are many times coming with nothing more than what they're wearing at the time uh, when they come to us. So um, always a great list of needs on our website at myharmonyhouse.org. Um, things that we're looking for, we update it regularly. We also have an Amazon wish list of items that you can purchase on Amazon and have them shipped directly here. And, and uh, that's a huge support and huge help to us as well. That's a great idea. How about uh, how about volunteers? How are we doing on volunteers? We would love uh, more volunteers. We're always looking for great volunteers, um, whether you want to help us answer the phones at the front desk, uh, work in the donation center, helping sort through and pass those items along to our clients. Um, or if you want to cook in the kitchen, we, we are always looking for help there, um, uh, preparing great meals. Um, you know, a really unique opportunity right now is we're looking for meal groups. Um, one of the things that we lost in COVID was our meal groups that would prepare a meal offsite, bring it to Harmony House and serve. Um, we've seen a few of them come back since then, but we would love to see more. And it's a huge service to our, our kitchen team. They don't have to worry about, you know, dinner that night or lunch that afternoon. Um, so if, you know, your, your friend group, your work group or uh, your church family, there's small groups that want to get together and do something good. Uh, consider a meal group at Harmony House. And there's more information uh, about how you can do that on our website as well. Jared, before we go to break, you want to share that phone number for people? Absolutely. To call? Absolutely. Yeah. If you or someone you know um, needs help, we want to hear from you. 417-864-SAFE. That's 864-7233. It's confidential. It's 100% free. And it is always answered by a human being on the other end. We'll be back in a moment with more on Around the Ozark Spotlight. I'm your host, Scott Meyer. Back right after these messages. 
Hey, everybody, it's Ethan and Sarah Forhats from your favorite podcast, Around the Ozarks in Five. I'm sure you've been wondering, how can I get even more amazing stories, events, and witty banter to start my day? Well, look no further. Here we are. Sign up for our daily newsletter. You'll have what's going on around the Ozarks right at your fingertips each weekday morning. Yeah, just go to AroundTheOzarks.com, click on the newsletter tab to sign up. Thanks for listening to Around the Ozarks in 5. We hope to see you in your inbox soon. Welcome back to the second half of today's Around the Ozarks Spotlight. I'm your host, Scott Meyer. I'm here with uh, actually someone I'd like to consider a, a be, 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 becoming a good business friend. Jared, it seems like we've talked to, to, to one another many times. Jared Alexander, the executive director for uh, Springfield's Harmony House. Uh you know, we were talking just a moment ago about, uh, you know, the needs uh, of the house, including uh, more volunteers and maybe people that are preparing foods and, and things like that. But I'm wondering about the other side. Let's talk about the domestic violence side for a second, if we can. When does someone know that it's time to make a call? I mean, I, you know, uh, anybody that's been married for a time has arguments, uh, you know, in marriages, those things happen. Uh, certainly don't want it to, to ever think that uh, it's OK to strike anybody, anything like that. Right. And sometimes it's not always just with the spouses. I would think there are times when uh, someone in a relationship may may show greater anger, maybe towards the children than they do uh, towards their partner. So uh, at, at what point in somebody's mind should that switch go off that says, you know what, I'm not in a good situation and I do need help? Yeah. Well, I, I think you bring up a good point, too, that it's not always physical. And I think that's a lot of what we see, you know, um, in, in the media, in TV and movies that that's, we see the, the bruises and the cuts and the broken bones and, and, you know, the hitting and, and whatever. Um, that's a pretty small, um, you know, um, actually number of what we hear a lot of it is more as a psychological and, the, um, the, the, um, emotional abuse, the financial, uh, controls that are put on and, and, and become abusive. Um, and so what, what I would say is that you need to learn more about, what abuse is and, and what it looks like in the many forms outside of just the physical that it can take in a relationship. Um, it comes down to it is all over uh, power and control. It is about someone wanting to create and maintain power and control over somebody else. And when they make that decision, um, you know, it, it grows from there. Sure. And it can take all those forms up to and including those those very uh, horrific physical um, and, and sometimes deadly instances that we read about in the news, unfortunately, around here. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say educate yourself. Know, know what it looks like. Um, we have a great resource on our website that is called our Power and Control Wheel. And it talks about all the things that you know might be uh, related to those different areas of abuse and little things that uh, you might notice uh, in, you, in yourself or in someone that you know and love. Um, and, and know that it's okay to say, are you okay? You know, if you mm -hmm. notice these things, it, it's okay to ask that question. It's also perfectly fine, and, and we welcome that, just to uh, have, have a phone conversation with one of our advocates about that. Um, you don't need to be needing to escape and get to Harmony House to give us a call. You can just call and talk to an advocate um, mm -hmm. and walk through those conversations of, is what I'm experiencing or is what I think is going on with a, a friend, a family member, or coworker, um, also abuse and, and talk through those things and know how to better support them as well. So any time is, is, is fine. Give us a call. We, we want to be at whatever, in whatever point of that journey you are as well. Jared, Springfield's not a huge community. And when somebody uh, finally has the ability, I won't even say courage. I'm not sure it's courage. I think sometimes it's just the ability to get away Absolutely. from someone and, and find their way to your doorstep. Uh, after they spend the time and they've worked with uh, uh, the, the folks at, at Harmony House to, to help them get better, uh, back on a better path, uh, aren't they turned back into the community? And, and what happens then? I mean, how, how does that work? Well, I will tell you. So one of the things that we do is we do more of that education here at Harmony House. Um, we, we teach a, a class called DV 101. And, and I've been asked before, well, why, why would you need to teach that class? with clients and with people that are in in shelter well a lot of times uh scott they don't recognize that those things that have been done to them are abuse and they are abusive mm -hmm. tendencies or they are controlling tendencies so we want to also better equip them that you recognize those things yourself so 
hopefully you don't return to those relationships or return, mm-hmm. or if you find yourself in a future relationship where these things start to occur, you know it ahead of time and you know how to navigate that. Um, so that that's one. And, and two, we want to uh, make sure that they're returning into a safe environment. Um, we do help with housing. We help um, find uh, safe and secure places uh, that they can support on their own sustainably as well. Um, because what we don't want is for those things to then spiral that they can't afford a place um, and they end up returning to that abusive situation. Um, but we also recognize that nationwide right now, the statistic would tell you that um, it takes a person seven times on average returning to their abuser or an abusive situation before they make the final break. Um, wow. So you're welcome back at Harmony House. You can mm-hmm. always turn to us and ask for some, ask for help um, because we know that it's it's not immediate. It's not a, a overnight process that um, is just solved. Um, it, it takes time and, and we want to be there and uh, provide whatever help we can through that process. Well, it sounds like Harmony House is a good place to have patience. Uh, it provides Absolutely. patience Absolutely. and uh, for the patients, if you will. And what we, I think we do a good job at is we meet people where they are. Everybody's story mm-hmm. is different. Everybody's situation um, that led them to Harmony House is different. We don't try to plug them into a program. Mm-hmm. We just have a wealth of resources and knowledge and connections in the community um, to meet them where they are and find the best fit to help them um, live a new life free of abuse. Sure. We're losing summer here. Uh, I hate that thought, yeah. but uh, we are we are desperately now uh, marching our way through August into September. Uh, I know we're coming up on eye care, and mm-hmm. uh, you might want to touch on that a little bit for those that aren't aware of what eye care is and how they can get, quite frankly, uh, companies involved in eye care to provide more opportunities uh, for people at work to be able Absolutely. to get more education. Well, the month of October is, as you say, quickly uh, coming up on us, and that is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, and, and so we use that here locally to raise awareness about not only what abuse is, what it looks like, how you can recognize it, but the resources that are available to help like Harmony House. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I care this will be the ninth year, um, which is awesome to think about that we're nine years strong now in this campaign. Um, to raise awareness and raise funds for Harmony House. Um, mm-hmm. And a business of any size and type can get involved. Um, it's $150 for each location that would want to participate. And with that, we're going to give you all the tools that you need uh, to A, educate uh, your team and your customer base or whoever is going to be there about uh, Harmony House, about uh, how to talk about domestic abuse. Um, and then we're going to put resources in your hands uh, to share in your company. Um, whether you're uh, a restaurant or uh, an office building of thousands of people, um, you can participate and really make um, meaningful impact on this discussion. Um, and, and it's really cool, Scott, to see how this has evolved over time, that um, this is something that a lot of companies now in Springfield look forward to. They, they look forward to October and how are we going to do uh, something bigger and better to have fun with, to raise money for Harmony House. Sure. You know, it's, it's become part of culture um, that we're going to talk about domestic abuse. We're going to talk about Harmony House and we're going to, you know, we're going to have some fun with our team, um, you know, doing something together and team building to raise money for Harmony House. Um, the kickoff is coming up Wednesday, September 27th. Um, there's information on our Facebook page and our website about how you can get registered um, to participate in eye care. And you want to be at that kickoff. You want to be at that that breakfast um, that morning at the Oasis at 730. We're going to tell you how to do it if you've never been before. Um, if you have been before, come back, bring a guest, bring friends that uh, our business owners or decision makers in their company to participate as well. Um, we're going to get everybody fired up about um, why this is so important in our community uh, more than ever before and how you can make a difference wherever you are. I think another thing that uh, I find important about things like domestic violence, I don't believe that they know any uh, uh, specific boundaries uh, monetarily in any community. Uh, no. It's not... In our case, you know, that's just something that uh, happens in a, in a poor community. Uh, domestic violence can certainly find its way into any community. Isn't that true? That's absolutely correct. Uh, we all know someone who has or will be experiencing domestic violence in their lifetime. Mm-hmm. One in three women, one in four men will experience some form of abuse in their life. 
Um, and so, you know, take those numbers back to your office, um, to your place of business, to your church family, to your social groups. We all know somebody. And what we are trying to do through eye care is help recognize those signs and help recognize what it looks like so that when we come across that, um, we can either uh, recognize it in ourselves, in our own relationships, or we can recognize it in our friends, our coworkers, our employees, um, and do something to support them. Um, there are so many places that now are uh, are able to provide that support um, as part of their entire employee program now uh, of saying, you know, we're, we're, we're an eye care company. Um, that I ask me why I care sticker is proudly displayed on the windows mm -hmm. of those businesses year round. And, and we are so thrilled to see that each and every year. Um, but it tells, I think, your staff um, in, in that business. Um, and it also tells your, your clients and your customers, this is a place you can trust. This is a safe place. This is a place that supports you. We're going to help you through whatever's going on. But it also tells the community that this is a business that isn't going to stand for abuse in our community either. Um, that we're, we're doing something about it and, and it's not going to happen here. Are there any other significant fundraisers that are uh, on the horizon? Uh, this this Saturday, August uh, 19th, we have our first ever pickleball tournament is happening. So we're excited to see that. We've got a sold out uh, full field of pickleballers coming to uh, sure. have some fun and compete for Harmony House and raise some money. We're very excited about that. Um, and then, yeah, all, all October long, that's what's really unique is that all these businesses, they, they do a fundraiser on their own and uh, they come up with really unique opportunities to do that, whether it's, you know, a percentage of sales at a retail store, uh, a dine-in night at your favorite restaurant. There is something every single day uh, and week in that month of October that you can support Harmony House and support local business, um, which is a really cool way um, that I care partners with the community to do this. You know, it's amazing, uh, Jared. I think you'd agree. Uh, Springfield, uh, being the size community that it is, is awfully generous. The, the, the most generous. I, I think it's, you know, everywhere you turn every day of the year, you can find a way um, to get involved with an important cause. And, and, mm -hmm. and there's always good news about uh, a business or an individual here that is just doing something outstanding and, and sometimes transformational for, for uh, organizations in this community. You know, we didn't get a chance. We're about running out of time, so we may not get much of a chance here. But uh, why don't you tell the folks how you're doing? How's Jared Alexander doing? You went through the pandemic as a as a, a leader, uh, and you've got staff. How many staff? We are up to 54 people in our office now. Okay. Well, all over the place helping support. But, but, but you had to deal with staff, and you had to deal with your own family. You had to deal with the school things. Uh, you've got young kids. I mean, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, big guys, I think um, what I love so much about this organization and this team is that we're here for each other. I think we were all going through those same things and, and we just said, hey, you know, you need to take the time you need to, to um, handle those things. You need to be there for your family. Um, but being able to be here and doing the work that I'm doing and with our team that they're doing um, for others, having such an important role in this community that, that Harmony House has, um, it keeps me going every day. And I have just been so thrilled to, uh, I'm about uh, almost coming up on nine months in this this role. Um, yep. And so I uh, have just been pleased every single day to come to work and, and uh, work with an amazing team of staff and volunteers who just, you know, they, they do amazing things every day. Well, the city's lucky to have you and certainly the area as well. And, uh, and the things you do are amazing. I'm so glad that you're able to share them with us uh, whenever you get a chance to do that. Why don't you, before we run out of time, throw out the number again and the website so people can get more information, get involved, and uh, and maybe get help. Absolutely. It's www.myharmonyhouse.org, and you can find all the things we talked about, how to get involved, how to volunteer, how to donate, um, whether that's through um, monetary or in-kind needs or food. Um, there's also information about eye care coming up right across the top. There's a banner to click on, find out how you can get involved with eye care, how your business can make a real difference this October. Um, and then check out our new, um, enhanced site about education and prevention. Um, we're really putting a lot of effort into our outreach and education focus right now, because, um, we know that, um, more adding more beds doesn't ultimately solve the big problem, the root cause of this issue. And so education will, and that's where we're going to put a lot of our focus. And so educate yourself, educate those around you. Um, and if you do 
you or someone you know needs our help, 417-864-7233, 864-SAFE, 24 hours a day and 100% confidential. We want to hear from you. I want to thank my guest today, Jared Alexander. Jared, the executive director of Springfield's Harmony House on the Around the Ozark Spotlight. Also, my producers, Taylor Worley and Jay Stevens, as well as all of you for joining us. If you happen to miss any or all part of today's program, you can always find it in its entirety on the MidwestFamilySpringfield.com website, the Around the Ozarks.com site, or our new app for ATO, which can be found in Apple apps or Android apps. And you can hear all of today's show, as well as all the earlier shows from this past year. I'm Scott Meyer. Remember, every day is a gift. Have a great day.